Good morning, dear dear friends. I have uh, uh, I, would, I would like to start with a question: Why one should study Ukrainian literature or Ukrainian language? It's better to say because there is without if we don't study Ukrainian language, we cannot come to Ukrainian literature. So, what is Ukrainian literature? I will make a very small, very brief introduction to you. With us, this book, which is was written in Ukrainian, the book of Valery Kurinsky, it's uh, autodidactic uh, post psychology or psychological autodidactics. It's, it's just imagine, it's impossible to build life. It's impossible to learn how to manage for us uh, ourselves uh, in order to achieve those things that we, we want. So this is, and also the text is very good. It's of such a good quality. Just, uh, I don't know even how to describe it. <laughs> so good. Next point, very short, very short introduction. This is a Ukrainian avant-garde poetry. It's like um, futurist and also surrealist in one book. It's, it gives so much pleasure for imagination, for thinking. It, uh, incroyable, I want to say in French, uh, because I already mentioned French <laughs> surrealist. It's so good. Next um, uh, writer, Domontovich, uh, he wrote several no novels. He lived in Soviet times, was uh, for, for prohibited. Forget, uh, like forgotten, but now they publish him uh, his books. He's so good. His text is very good, and the plot is usually very interesting. I recommend, highly recommend, to read his novel Doctor Seraphicus. Uh, next uh, presentation. This is a, a writer, a writer and a poet, and also drama, uh, dramaturg, uh, the play writer. His books, his uh, books are very, are very good. You know, uh, very seldom you can find a book on which, like in every paragraph, uh, there is uh, a, a thought. In, in his uh, paragraphs, there could be several thoughts. So this is like uh, maybe Kurinsky, Nietzsche, uh, Emerson, if to draw comparisons, uh, could, could do the same like uh, he does. And I have also one of, uh, one of his books to present, uh, that is uh, his uh, plays. Uh, if you know the name of uh, Chekhov, you can forget, because he doesn't come even closer to uh, two of the plays here. One is called uh, uh, Via, uh, Coffee Vienna in Vienna, or yeah, Vienna Coffee. And the other one is, um, it is like a checkpoint, military checkpoint. And uh, I saw both plays several times. They're very good. Just the audience was just captured, was so silent, so attentive to, uh, to understand every phrase which was pronounced. So, Dmitro Kurczynski, his plays should be staged also in your countries because without them we cannot be modern, believe me. Next, uh, Ukrainian writer Oksana uh, uh, Oksana Zabushko, and uh, she uh, several of her works are translated uh, to English and uh, to uh, some other languages. I love her poetry. There were uh, times in my life when I was not able to travel without this book of her of, of her poetry, and. Uh, she knows Ukrainian literature so well. She speaks Ukrainian so well. It's just incredible. And believe me, those like uh, several years ago, there was a Pulitzer Prize uh, was given for poetry to some uh, to some guy. I say guy because he's not a poet. In fact, I listened to his presentation. He cannot say a sentence without a swearing word, and he speaks like. Uh, like a teenager who saw only uh, only computer games in his life. So this is, if you read this, you will really understand what poetry is. Next one, this book, very valuable. This is like a collection of Ukrainian modern contemporary poets. Though Korczynski and Oksana Zabushko, they are, they are still around, they write and uh, they are active. Uh, but these are, this is uh, an ex younger generation of poets. A very good book. A lot of uh, very creative ideas, very um, unique metaphors. So, I hope this was enough to start to speak about very serious stuff. I want to show you something which I have never uh, seen in any book. And that is uh, what movements we need. We will, uh, we will start, uh, we will stop literature and now we will come to like introduction to uh, Ukrainian 
language and we will start with analyzing movements so I will show you how to make movements all the time all this speech apparatus in order to sound properly in Ukrainian and uh, for you not to have a problem with your with your soul which you usually feels when there is something wrong so I will just remind for any language for learning any language it's important uh, to know the focusing so the, uh, it's a spot it's a uh, yeah, it's a spot to which uh, all vectors of uh, movement of our speech apparatus mostly on the tongue but others too they are directed at this spot that is focusing also for us it's important to know the position of the tongue because it gives a lot uh, uh, for the timber for the sound in itself uh, of the language so uh, the focusing in ukrainian language will be here on lower teeth and the position of the tongue will be like this it's like a boat turned upside down right so this is a very relaxed position it's exactly like in french believe me and uh, we will come to, <laughs> to french a little bit later so focusing is here the uh, the position of the tongue is like this and i suggest to use a decoy slava ukraine so we say slava ukraine this is a phrase we ukrainians are saying very often you can you so you will <laughs> you will recognize it slava ukraine so and we imagine that all the movements are directed at uh, at this place at this spot so with this position from this position we will uh, try to analyze all the rest of the moon movements of the speech apparatus for us to have proper sounds and these here you see those are the sounds those are not, not letters so we'll start with a uh, labial or lip sounds of uh, which we make with the help of lips for p and b the tongue position is stays the same relaxed it's and we speak about ukraine relaxed and we just um, put uh, lips uh, close to each other that is the initial position then we give air and we have p and if we add voice it will be b so that is the uh, the first two uh, two sounds next sound label also m the same we uh, we squeeze lips a little bit touch them together and we give uh, we give air both air and a little bit of sound but not only to the uh, this space in the mouth but also to the nasal cavity it's very big here on my picture it's it's usually so much smaller so we give the sound and air to this and to this and it will be mm, and then we just open lips a little bit of air with together with the sound and we will have mm, mm, mm. it's very close to uh, probably in your language is best language but it's it's awful it's always difficult because the position of the tongue is different diff different and also the focusing is different so next uh, uh, two uh, two uh, two of these sounds we f and m usually uh, they may they are made in this way we touch with uh, the the bottom the the, uh, the tongue doesn't do anything we touch with the lower lip we, we touch the teeth upper teeth and we will have this f if we give f and also if together with f we give a little bit of voice we will have v the tongue is not doing anything it's relaxed completely next group of, of sounds to do for um to do uh, it's not like in english it's the position of the tongue is relaxed in this position and we make t and d uh, with this position with this uh, place of the tongue with this uh, surface of the tongue and it will be here also labia a little bit close uh, low down to uh, the teeth and it will be we just touch we don't move the, uh, the tongue we just touch to the to the we touch and then we give a uh, and then we'll have to the to the next the same the same uh, the same place N we, we we move a little bit this uh, this part of the tongue we move it uh, until here touch then we give air ear and voice to this cavity and also to the nose or nasal cavity and we will have n, 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 n. next this is the uh, this is the place this is the sound or the movement when uh, the the tongue in ukrainian language starts moving and it will be move it will move like this it will touch this position here l, l, 
sometimes like it's on the edge of uh, teeth the upper teeth and um, the alveolar here so we can say l we touch it then we give sound and we will have l l l next uh, uh, those are those these are produced near the teeth upper teeth usually in all the languages these uh, they <laughs> they should be uh, produced here so we we uh, with the, this position of the tongue we just touch a little bit uh, we, we come close with um, with our tongue to the upper teeth and we give air and we'll have If we if we give a voice a little bit, then we'll have z z z. One unique uh, sound for Ukrainian is tz. It's when we touch the teeth with our tongue, and then we give air and we uh, pull it uh, pull it uh, back, and we will have tz tz tz, and come back to the initial position of the tongue. Next sound, um, it's uh, r. So for this uh, sound, I love because it's different in all languages. Uh, but it's like in Italian or in or in, um, or in Spanish. So when uh, a, a centimeter of the tip of the tongue is like trembling on the air which we are um, pumping uh, over here, so it will be. Rrr, rrr. We give air from here. It goes here and then. Rrr. R, r, r. Next, ch. For ch, we just uh, we keep the tongue in the same position. We touch this place. It's a little bit uh, where the alveoli, or a little bit even higher. And we will have we will touch it, and then uh, we give a ch, ch. If we give a little bit of a voice, then we will have j, j, j. And if we just uh, come close with uh, this place all the time to this place in the mouth, then we will have and give a, we will have sh, 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 sh. And if we give a little bit of voice, we'll have z, z, like in French, z, z, z. Uh, next sound or next movement to make this sound, it's y. It will be in the middle. Usually, y sound it's in the middle. It's produced in the middle of the tongue and with the middle also of uh, of uh, sorry even in the middle of the mouth and also we touch in the middle with the middle of the tongue. So for this we move a little bit. Yeah, we move a little bit our tongue up and we will have y. Then we will put it down y y y like this. Next, uh, these are back tongue uh, sounds. K, for that, to, for us to have K, we need to touch with the back of our tongue this place, this place here, K. So it will be like uh, K. We touch, give a, and there will be K, K. If we give a little bit of voice here, if we add voice, then we'll have G, G, G. In Ukrainian, we also have H sound. It's produced also here. We just uh, bring close the, the back of the tongue, the same thing. Uh, but we don't touch, we don't touch this. We will have a little, little, little uh, uh, space, a little room here left. And when we give a, uh, we will have h, h. And then if we add voice, we will have h, h, which is uh, very typical for Ukrainian. H, h, h. Look, it seems like we covered all the all the consonants. I have to add to this. Don't be afraid. All the consonants in Ukrainian have their soft pairs, so they all can be almost all of them can. Be, I think it's yeah, almost all of them can be soft. In as to vowels, it's very easy. We don't reduce vowels in Ukrainian. We have e, e, a, a, o, o, and that's it. Good luck. This is the first like introduction. I hope you will like it. Put the like and share with your friends. Have a nice day.